Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina. Today, I got a new toy to play with. I got this Brinley 15 gallon self storing lawn sprayer. I picked this thing up at my local home improvement center and it is time to check it out. Why did I buy this thing? Well, uh, I've got water that pipes up to the upper gardens up there and I've got water that pipes down to the lower barns. But I do have a lot of fruit trees on the property and we've had some issues with some fungus and also insect control is something that I'd like to have, um, you know, the ability to, to use a sprayer like this to hit. So that is what I got it for. These things also have, and I'll show you when I get it apart, but these things also have uh, arms that you can fold out and you can spray chemicals directly on the grass if you want to have like a competition lawn, have a really fancy lawn, something like that. But for me, I'm interested in using the wand that comes with it and using it for uh, spraying trees. So that's what I've got this thing for. 15 gallons seems like more than enough solution because at the end of every year before the freeze sets in, I've got to be able to empty this thing completely out. This is an electric powered motor, which is nice. No more pumping the handle like on a hand pump sprayer. So uh, I, I've, it just seemed like a really cool thing. Now Brindley also sells 25 gallon size one, uh, but I felt like that was just too big for what I needed to use it for. So anyway, that's it. I, uh, I opened the top of it up just briefly, but I didn't really unpack anything. Uh oh, might need to get a knife. see what kind of wonders away this looks like a bunch of hoses a bunch of pieces in other words it's gonna be some install time here we've got a nice owner's manual here I'll set that aside and we've got a lot of uh, looks like pressure hoses let's see if I can read without my glasses on I'm 200 psi so that's nice a lot of hose here go ahead and set that aside here is our uh, wiring it looks like that's going to be going to our tractor and here is our uh, pump, electric pump. Set those aside as well. Let's see what else we got. Some shorter pieces of hosing. Lots of adapters and connectors. <laughs> In fact, this looks like it's going to be quite a project. I like that. Lots of nuts and bolts here. Uh, interesting collection of nuts and bolts, actually. A whole bunch of little of everything in here. Set those aside as well. Another small piece of hose, another even smaller piece of hose. So that's kind of cool that they're all pre-cut. I appreciate that part of it. And we've got some metal here. It looks like here's our pump, our sprayer. Nice sprayer. Brackets. Lots of brackets. If I'm gonna be brackets, there's a bracket. There's a bracket. There's a bracket. There's a bracket. And there are some brackets. We'll lay those over here. And we'll pull this off. Looks like there's a cover here. There we go. Set that on the side. And here is our 15 gallon tank. That's really nice. I can only. All right, down below, I believe we got an axle. More metal brackets. Another metal bracket. Another metal bracket. And then on to our tires. One tire and two tires. Right on. Well, that didn't look like a whole lot. So we'll have this piece. Looks like I'll be doing some work on the ground today. Go ahead and open up the manual and see what we got. got our owner's manual and that comes in several languages that looks like Spanish that looks like French and here's some color instructions that's kind of nice warranty card information in all three languages so very nicely uh, rounded out We'll go ahead and register that as I did with the other ones. All right, let's see here. Owner's manual, ST152BH. That is the model for this thing. And, uh, okay, there's all the parts. 
Interesting. So I, I wasn't sure what to expect as far as uh, assembly, but it really looks like the frame of this thing builds itself around the tank itself. So the tank becomes an integral part of the frame. It actually adds the rigidity. Here's our parts list. And there's a lot of parts uh, listed here. And then our assembly instructions. And let's see, we've got uh, step one through, let's see how many steps we're looking at here. Like maybe 22. Yep, steps one through 22. Electrical hose connections, the work. So we're just going to start at the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. I'm ready when you are. Oh, you know what else I need to look up? What tools do I need for this fine job? And then we'll get started. All right, now that I got everything organized, it is time to begin. I've got all my nuts and bolts laid out. And we're just going to start at the beginning because that's it, man. That's what we got to do. So part one here. Uh, uh, let's see. Assemble frame brackets. Same simple enough. Let's go ahead and do that. I wonder if there's a forward in the back. Yes, there is. So that's going to be our forward. I'm going to flip this thing around so that it matches the picture. There we go. And that would be these two pieces right here. They're going to sit in here like so. All right, that's these right here. And these four washers right here are going to get used. Like I do with everything, always a good idea. Let's see, does it want those facing up like that? Always a good idea to uh, start these all, don't tighten them down all the way, and then go back and tighten them once you have all your stuff started. So that's that is my advice on building anything. If you've ever built <laughs> anything, that was anything. Once you've got those started, go and do the front ones. Same thing. Great. Now we can go ahead and tighten those down the rest of the way. This is just a 13 millimeter or half inch. You know, 15 gallons doesn't seem like a lot until you think about the weight. What is it, seven and a half gallons, or seven and a half pounds per gallon? So you can see why this framing has to be so stout. There you go. All right, let's see what number two is. We're going to be installing the axle bracket. That's what these two pieces right here are. These are the brackets for our axle. They're going to be mounted here and here. And let's get that done right now. So those are going to be mounted to the outside. Four of these small bolts here. And four of these locking nuts. Some people really uh, don't like the assembly of when they purchase something like uh, furniture at Ikea or something like that. They come home and they see that as an obstacle that cannot be overcome. The truth is, if you follow the instructions on these things, you're really not all that bad. And any mistake you make can usually, if you catch it early enough, be easily undone. It's when you make a mistake early on in the process that it can be a pain because, uh, well, you have to take apart multiple portions in order to get it all back together. That can be a real hassle. I can understand. All right,
So it's tightened down, moving on. So far, so good. All right, we're going to slide our axle beam in. Like so. And looks like we've got our uh, shims here. So that would be. We're going to add, uh, let's see here. We're going to add the shim, a washer. We'll do the same thing on this side. Shim, washer, and then we'll be putting our wheels on. And then we've got two more washers. And we have our two circlips here. Now these C-clips Sometimes you have to use a screwdriver, sometimes you have to use a pair of needle nose pliers, sometimes they'll just pop on there. Uh, I'll see if I can get those on, but a lot of times I use a pair of needle nose. There's an old joke in the automotive industry, and that is, what's a hammer? Everything is a hammer. That's the joke. Because you have to be there in order to understand it, but everything can become a hammer. It might break it, but it could be a hammer. There we go. Once those two clips are on securely, here's our wheels. Moving right along here. All right, I'm going to flip this thing sideways now. Like so. And we're going to be attaching these. I believe. Oh, no, they're on the other side. We're going to attach those to the front. Like so. And those are going to fit in there like that. And that goes to the inside, and that's going to be using those same uh, bolts here with the locking washers. So we'll go ahead and hold that in place and uh, put our bolts in there. Hopefully, y'all can see this okay. Somebody complained in my last video that I didn't zoom in enough on stuff. Well, guess what? I'm all by myself here. There's no cameraman, and uh, sometimes working on a farm, I just don't have time for massive editing, but I do try to make a video that's easy enough for you to understand. I apologize if this is not the perfect video you were hoping to find. But it still ought to give you an idea of what is necessary to get one of these puppies put together. Alright, go ahead and tighten those four bolts down. I believe we'll be ready to flip this thing over. So far, this thing's moving right along. Let's hope that continues. Alright, number 43 here, we're going to be putting this in, and then we're going to be adding these two pieces right here. This is our tongue, so this is, this is actually interesting how they've done this. They've got this small bolt here, let me see if I can turn this up. Yeah, we've got this, you know, I'll tell you what, I'm going to zoom in a little bit too. Alright, hopefully that's a little easier for you all to see. So this, uh, this is your tongue, this is what's going to be sitting here where we're going to bolt to. And so what they've done is they've made a device that sandwiches between, so our pin will go right through there. So we're going to take these two long pieces here, I would imagine they're sticking through like so, and then we'll bolt those down.
Okay, tighten those up. This bolt needs to be tightened a little bit more now that we've got it all sandwiched together. I'll go ahead and do that. If I can reach in there, I might need to get it. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Lastly, on this. Here's our pin. We're going to slide that through there and use our lock like that. Very cool. We are ready to roll this thing back over. We can get this box out of the way now. And we'll flip this thing around. We'll be working back here for right now. So this rear piece here, what this is, is the racking probably for the hose and the pump and all that. As you can see, here's our drain there, and uh, that looks like our inlet. So let's go ahead and get that done. It looks like we got these two pieces here. Yep. Be this piece and this piece, and we're going to be installing that to these brackets here. And that uses our last four pieces, and these are going to be facing outward and back. So it looks like it's going to look like that. side. right here it's going to sit on top and this is a little bit more interesting we got this little setup here it's a little different and that is these two bolts here are going to go up through and we're going to install one nut all the way to the base then the next step we're going to install another nut on top of that which is an interesting design I like that it's kind of something different I like it when engineers get creative with what they got. It looks like they found a way to make this work beautifully without any special nuts and bolts. This is really interesting. So now we're going to take another two nuts. We're going to face them upside down. Lower those down onto here. Alright. Now 
now we've got these two pieces and we want these to be facing with this piece right here facing down. So we'll go ahead and attach that like so. And we'll put yet another washer or another nut down. Do the same thing on the other side. It's amazing when you open up a box and see all the nuts and bolts and all the pieces and things. Oh, man, this, is, this is going to be daunting. This is going to be a heck of a task. But the reality is it's not all that difficult at all, is it? That we've already used up three quarters of the stuff we're going to use on this. And now we're moving on already from the assembly of the mechanical portion of this to the electric and hydraulic portion. And so that's where we're at right now. We're going to be installing the pump and uh, several of the other hoses and, and brackets. And, and that's, we're done. I mean, it's that quick. It doesn't take very long at all, does it? So let's go ahead and uh, get that pump installed. I'll rotate this thing back around. Hopefully. Now these feet are adjustable so you can line up the holes. Okay, nice and tight. Beautiful. And then it looks like it's time to attach or start attaching all the rubber hose. We've got this piece right here that is going to be bolted right like that. So on these ends, you can see I've already got that side kind of screwed in. You're going to take a long piece and one of these plastic nuts. You're going to go ahead and screw that down, kind of tighten that up like so. And then we're going to use this. This is a screen. Both sides will get a screen inserted in there. And then the sprayer is that little angled piece. That's going to fit inside of this collar. And then we'll screw that on into place. Kind of aim that down. Of course, we can adjust this after the fact so it sprays in the direction we want. But that's pretty much what it wants to look like. I'll do the same thing over here. Screen goes in first. There's our collar. There's our sprayer. Fit the sprayer through and tighten it down. Alright, it's talking about six different hoses. We have a 12 foot hose. We have three 22 inch hoses, a single 17 inch hose, and a single 8 inch hose. So we're going to first attach the 22 inch hose. And uh, we're going to be using a pair of pliers, which I have here. Tie, tighten these down. What is number 30? Okay, here's our 22 inch hoses we've got our 17 and our 8 and here's our 22 so we're going to be attaching the 22 and that's what these are for these clips here these are the devil's work but they work <laughs> these go on like so and you kind of have to mush them down sometimes you might need to use a little silicone you don't want to damage anything in the process of installing it but once you get it down in there like so right now you're going to take your clamp here and start squeezing it together and that's where a pair of uh, channel locks or vice grips or whatever will come in handy. That is your hose clamp. That's going to seal that on so no air comes through there. And there we go. Now what we want to do is we've got to snake this through the small hole up on the top. And it would be a little hard for me to describe or show it to you, but I will definitely reach my hand in here and thankfully there's plenty of room and there's a small hole we're going to be pulling this up so there we go and it's going to go like so
All right, I'm going to move this thing sideways and I am going to change the camera angle so you guys can get a better look at what I'm doing next. All right, I folded in these arms here just temporarily, just so a little easier to work on here. But here is the line coming out from the tank. It is strapped on. The arrow is pointing forward on this pump. We're ready to move on to the next piece. The next piece is, is this. It's our 8 inch. So I'm going to go ahead with another one of these clamps. Slide that down on there. Slide that over it. And we will tighten that clamp down. Okay, once we got that snug, the next step is this piece right here. Oops. And yeah, the clamp. That piece right there we're gonna be installing right on here. First we'll put our clamp down on there. Slide that in. Again, if you have trouble getting these on, and sometimes you will, a little bit of lube will work just fine. Just make sure it's nothing you wouldn't want to put on a tree or on a grass or whatever. Okay, so that's nice and snug. And we'll put our clamp on. All right, moving right along, right? Okay, so the next step is we're going to be attaching this, which is a Y splitter with on off valves. We're going to be attaching it to that. Uh, and it's got a rubber grommet, an anti leak grommet in there already. Make sure that it hasn't fallen out in shipping. Okay. Looking good. And our next step is going to be to hook up. Uh, these connections are going to go back to rubber hoses here to feed these, these pieces here. So we're going to be grabbing this. There's going to be an O-ring and a cap for each side. So there's our piece. We're going to slide that piece inside there, put our cap on. That rubber grommet is going to protect it from leaking. This is very much just like a regular garden hose would have. Make sure that's in there pretty good. Like so. And go ahead and screw those on. Same thing. Slide that in there, put that on top of it, make sure it's seated in there fairly flat. And then screw it into place. Like so. So now we have our two pieces here. Okay, all right, so once we've got all that hooked up, kind of drag that over the side, it is showing the barb, and of course we're gonna arrange this stuff in a much better setup here in a little while, but we're gonna be putting our longer piece, our 22 inch is gonna to go to the right hand side. So we'll slide that across there, slide that on. Right, we'll go ahead and tighten that down. And then we have our shorter piece over here. And then we're going to slide that on the left side. Same thing, clamp it. And now these two pieces are going to attach to our ends here and here. So I'll go ahead and make that happen. And then 
and clamp that down as well. Right, so we're running out of pieces, so uh, we must be running out of job. Let's take a look. I think we only got one more page, and it's time to wire up the tractor side of things. That's what I figured. So this last piece here, that's going to be for our uh, hand sprayer, which is what I'm going to be using this thing for most of the time. So I am going to fold these in, like so. Hose here. I'm going to need one more clamp. And we're going to slide that onto this piece right here. All right. Tighten that clamp right there. And lastly, our sprayer. Gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have to do that here. Get my last clamp, put that there. Slide this thing on. There we go. And tighten our clamp. Beautiful. That's it. Uh, this hose just gets wrapped around when not in use. It kind of hangs out like that. Now, you want to see the cool thing about this? I'm going to back the camera up. I'll show you this part and we will uh, move on in part two to wiring up the tractor so that the pump works. And in part three, we'll take this thing for a spin. Well, there we go. It's uh, not a whole lot to it, right? We have our pieces here and make some adjustments on that. but. That's for spraying. Now, I don't think I'll be using this much for that type of spraying, but if we had an infestation of critters, I certainly could use this to go between the rows in my garden and spray, uh, you know, anti-bugs or whatever. Uh, you could use this, certainly, this part of it for spraying lawn for mosquitoes or if you wanted to have, like I said earlier, a competition lawn, a lawn that had no weeds, that kind of thing. For my use, though, I'm going to be using this mostly. Get back out of there. There we go. And that is the sprayer with a nice 12 foot hose so I can spray around my uh, uh, apple trees, my peach trees, pear trees, plum trees, cherry trees, you name it. I've got a lot of trees and they do get insects and they also get like blight and stuff like that. So I'll be, I'll be using this mainly for that. One thing I do like about this, you can see overall it's not a, not a very big unit, is that this does fold in kind of out of the way. But more than that is this little feature right here which I really like. You just tip it up. It actually sits on its end, so if you're in a small garage where you don't have a whole lot of storage space, this thing really won't take up a whole lot of storage space. It's kind of compact, and it'll stay out of your way until you need it. Uh, anyway, that's it. I mean, the electric part, I'm not going to bother to show you how to wire that up. That's literally two wires. Just under your battery, one to the positive, one to the negative. There's a switch there. You run the cabling back to this. My uh, mower has some extra features added to it, so it wouldn't look a lot like yours anyway. But uh, that's it for today. My name is Eric, the owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. I hope you enjoyed the video on the Brindley 15-gallon pump sprayer. And uh, if you did, perhaps you'll think about liking and subscribing. I'll see you next time. Take care. There's always something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet, liberty sows its seed at bar.